Rose landed a very nice right hand. Oh, an armbar attack. Flawless technique. Impeccable timing. And ruthless execution. Oh my God! These are the foundations of a perfect submission. Gasping for hope in the whirlpool of despair, the opponent is forced to admit his own helplessness or pay a heavy price. Oh, the right arm! In this video, we go through the artistic finishes from a vertical starting point that turned into the hallmarks for their authors. Yeah! Are you kidding me? Yes! In February of 2013, French welterweight Olivier Fontaine, with two wins in five bouts, faced his compatriot, Safian Benchora. In the beginning, Benchora was lucky to catch the kick. Everyone was anticipating a foot sweep or a takedown attempt. Olivier, in turn, raised the stakes in one big motion. Surprisingly avoiding a self-knockout after landing on his head, Fontaine would not let the desperately resisting victim escape the arm lock. And another one for the fans who shed a nostalgic tear every time the MMA heroes of the VHS era come up. In 1999, Rumina Sato showcased a textbook execution of a mid-air armbar. Following the loss of his Cage Warriors featherweight belt, Patty Pimblett was determined to take a shortcut to the promotion's lightweight title in 2018. Such a bold intention did not sit well with Alexis Savitas, who agreed to confront the Brit grappler. Savitas opened the second round with a series of accurate shots, but instinctively, diving into Patty's legs, he left an opportunity for a triangle from which there was no way out. Unable to tighten up the choke, Pimblet shifted the focus to the opponent's arm. Alexis fought back. However, he only delayed the inevitable. Seconds later, Savitas surrendered to a flying triangle armbar. What is even more impressive? That wasn't the first time that the Englishman pulled off such a masterful submission. Back in 2014, the 19-year-old prospect forced a tap from Conrad Hayes in a spectacular fashion. Rosanna Mayunas, in the dawn of her amateur MMA career, was more famous for being in a relationship with the UFC heavyweight Pat Barry than for her fighting portfolio. Nonetheless, the sensational professional debut in 2013 had everyone buzzing about Thug Rose's bright future. In her second pro appearance, the 20-year-old Nama Yunus faced Kathina Catron. To kick things off, she found the target on the feet with a quick combo. But as soon as the girls locked up in the clinch, it was a wrap. Rose landed a very nice right hand. Oh, oh flying no. armbar oh, attack. Oh, sweeps her over. He's done. Oh, man. At the 12 second mark, Rose made a real splash with a flying armbar and won the crowd with an emotional celebration. The flying triangle is practically a mythical technique, the kind that everyone knows but very few actually pull off. Even at the highest level of the sport, UFC fans have had to wait until 2011 for this unorthodox move to first be executed. The laurels went to Pablo Garza, who in the previous performance triumphantly leapt into the air with a vicious jumping knee. Oh, he rocked it! Nobody expected the featherweight to defy gravity twice in a row. 
Yet, a series of chopping low kicks from Eve Jabwain forced the American to switch the approach on the fly. Working that clinch. Oh! Flying triangle! Right into it! Trying to finish this fight. And it's all over! Having barely touched the floor, Pablo instantly snitched up the triangle. It took a trip to the brink of the darkest void for his rival to give in. With a first round submission. Jimmy Flick managed to recreate Garza's feat in 2020, turning around a difficult scrap with Cody Durden. Featuring Twitch streams from Stephen Wonderboy Look at this, man, look at this, this is his the Jimmy the Brick, welcome to the UFC first round tap out win. Leading into December of 2017, UFC featherweight mainstay Cub Swanson was on a four-win streak and planning a title run. In the next clash, he intended to stop the hype train of the young unbeaten talent, Brian Ortega. But the grappling ace, T-City, also coming off four wins in the promotion, all flashy finishes, was not going to miss out on a golden ticket to the elite. T-City Ortega. The lack of experience did not prevent Brian from successfully exchanging with Killer Cub in a stand-up. And as Swanson descended into chaos, Ortega gained full control over the bout. Nearly strangling his opponent in the last seconds of the first round, Brian went into the second with the goal of getting the job done. By catching the BJJ black belt Swanson in a decapitating guillotine, T-City catapulted his career in the promotion. You see, I'm hanging with the best of the best. Another jumping gilly came in 2015 from a jiu-jitsu phenomenon, Charles Oliveira. Miles Jury and Nick Lentz were forced to tap to save their heads. An accomplished arm collector, Vinny Magalish, is far from being a complete MMA practitioner. An incredibly gifted ground expert with an extensive list of grappling achievements, the Brazilian is a vivid example why it's crucial to impose your terms in the fight. Very unlikely. Oh, big right hand! It is over! However, following a killer high kick inside the PFL cage in 2018, he received an invitation to the promotion's prestigious eight-man tournament. A million dollars in prize money quickly banished the heresy of a stand-up affair from Vinny's head. His adversary, Rakim Cleveland, hardly desired to tangle on the mat either. But even the boldest narrative faded in contrast with reality. Season, Vinny Magalhaes, just three minutes and 11 seconds, and he goes right into it. Initiating the clinch, Cleveland underestimated the aerial skills of Vinny, who moments later was hanging off Rakim's neck like a ball and chain. Deviating from his usual approach, Magalhaes would not go for a signature strangle. Switching to a reverse triangle, he grabbed a Kimura and finished the victim off with a rare combination of techniques. Anderson Silva is a symbol of an era, a generational talent with world-class abilities in all MMA aspects. For years, he's been the undisputed pound-for-pound -pound king, destroying anyone who dared to challenge him. Though in the golden age of martial arts, when the Japanese promotion Pride FC was in full power, the spider was not so invincible. The New Year's event in 2004 was the point of no return for Silva, who had three wins in four bouts within the organization. Anderson planned to make quick work of his opponent, Ryo Chonin, who was primarily a striker. But after dragging the Brazilian into deep waters, the samurai decided to test his luck. Oh, look at this! Whoa, this is good! Unbelievable! Performing a top-notch scissor takedown, Rio found himself in a perfect position for the inside heel hook. A painful joint lock was revered in jiu-jitsu for its damaging potential. An instant tap by the future legend and a submission of the year award secured a place in MMA history for the Japanese man. 
Starting his career as a street fighter, Jorge Masvidal went through many ups and downs before making world headlines with a devastating, funky knee. One wasted opportunity in the late 2000s was the quest for the inaugural Bellator lightweight title. Following a successful kickoff in the eight-man tournament, in the semifinals, the future Street Jesus with a 17-3 record confronted a great white shark of a submission game, Toby Amada. For almost three rounds, Masvidal was in charge, battering the foe from pillar to post. Just two minutes separated Jorge from a desired showdown in the finals against Eddie Alvarez, when Toby put on the last do-or-die spurt. Not having any shot. Well, Masvidal now in on a single leg. Oh, this is going to be interesting. How does this end? They don't teach you any moves from this position, let me tell you. Words on an upside down triangle. Oh, Masvidal's unconscious! Oh my gosh! While scrambling for position, Masvidal got up with Imada on his back. Jorge overlooked the fatal snap of an inverted triangle and took a fast train to the dreamland. As he just kind of goes unconscious. The best submission of 2009 did draw the attention of colleagues. And two years later, light heavyweight Rich Hale presented a masterpiece to the world. Well, he has an inverted triangle and he's going for it. Could we see another one? He's out! One of the best grapplers in MMA at the present moment, Rainier de Ritter, also took part in this challenge. In July 2022, the Dutchman defended the One Championship title against a dangerous striker, Vitaly Bigdash. At the outset, the challenger landed a right hand. In the clinch, he snatched up a guillotine. Just kidding, drops down for the geat. Stubborn de Ritter managed to restore blood flow to the brain. Having delivered the necessary ground and pound, the Dutchman grabbed a Kimura and initiated a transition to the inverted triangle. He's on top. Good recovery. Right? Let's see. This is tight. Oh, he's tight. It's tight. He's going to sleep. Lost in the abyss of Bermuda's waters, Big Dosh went limp, and Rainier scored his 16th victory in a row with 14 stoppages. What is a submission, if not a work of art in a world of absolute violence? But even such a diverse genre provides no better way to evoke paralyzing fear than an inside heel hook. Has a collection of legs back home and he's out! especially in conjunction with an Imanari roll, a sneaky way to gain perfect positioning for this leg lock. Ryan Hall demonstrated a flawless example of these moves chained together. In 2018, he met BJ Penn as part of the Veterans Farewell Tour. Ryan Hall, Despite once being a recognized jiu-jitsu genius, Penn was unable to compete with the wizard on the mat. An extended layoff in advance of this one, but still keeping a more active schedule than normal. Oh, that's oh, oh, Ryan Hall submits BJ oh, Penn in a blink! Entering the legs and securing the heel in one smooth motion, Hall grabbed the W and a Submission of the Year award. Still keeping a more active schedule than normal. And look for Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson used to be at a size disadvantage in his scraps. But when the UFC created a flyweight division, Mighty Mouse got the opportunity to showcase all his talents. After five years of pure domination, by October of 2017, he was one win away from surpassing Anderson Silva's seemingly unbreakable record of 10 title defenses. The 11th and final step to eternal glory was Ray Borg. Head out to your neighborhood 7 -11. Although for five rounds, the challenger heroically persevered, with two minutes left on the clock, the champion made the audience doubt the reality of what was happening. Would just lay there. Oh, whoa! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Right. Borg refusing. Oh, oh, there it is! Oh, Demetrius Johnson! Who's better? Oh, who's better? Who's better? By performing a dramatic suplex and a quick transition to an arm lock mid-air, Johnson invented the mighty armbar. The best submission of 2017 and a piece of contemporary art worthy to get a special place in a museum. Oh my god! <laughs> no! Oh 
my God. As the sport evolves, ground fighting virtuosos keep adding breathtaking strangles and crippling limb extensions to MMA highlight archives. If you want to see more grappling sorcery, tap out the like button and subscribe to the channel. Just lay there. Oh, whoa! Oh!